Okay, example two, absolute value of x is less than or equal to three. So we can see the absolute value expression all by itself, ready to go. Again, once I get to that point, absolute value, inequality symbol number, I compare it to the four cases. This is case number two. Once I establish this case two, I'm going to translate it from its current absolute value structure into a non-absolute value structure. Case two's um, translation is the opposite of the number less than or equal to x less than or equal to the number. So again, we're getting the absolute value bars out of the problem. We're creating a conjunction this time, compound inequality. Always less than symbols. Negative number less than x less than positive number. Since it says equals there, it's going to say equals on both of those. Uh, when we're graphing an inequality with an equals 2 attached to it, we're going to put a filled in circle at our boundary number. So negative 3 and positive 3. Now one thing that messes people up is we see less than and we think left for less than, but we're always reading from the letter to the number. x is bigger than negative 3, x is less than positive 3, bigger than negative 3 and less than positive 3 at the same time would be shading in between. That's how a case 2 inequality is always graphed for an absolute value inequality. It's always going to be dot dot, open or closed, and then you're going to shade in between. Okay. One thing, I'm not sure they're going to do this yet, but they might because the book does that sometimes. Um, they might throw a domain at you. Suppose they say domain is a set of integers. And we have the same exact expression, right? So if I was trying to graph that, this is what it would look like. Still negative 3 and positive 3 because, again, those are integers, right? Yep. All right, and equals 2 means equals 2. But then negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Those are big dots, aren't they? They would be that big. But, so if they happen to say some domain, you already know how to deal with domain, deal with it the same way. Just graph the part that would be true while filtering through the domain, graphing only what they're asking you to graph. Numbers that look like this, that have this property in order to graph it. Okay. 